and I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. My name is Guy Hayes from Austin, Texas. I'm originally from the Philippines. I used to be a business owner, a banker, and now a professional network marketer. I'm Marilyn Mosier from Northwest Iowa and in a little town near Elmore, which is by Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And my background is in radiology, technology, and mammography. So ladies out there, if you need a mammogram, if you're over 40, please get them. My name is Marsha Livingston. I'm from a little town in Michigan called Eaton Rapids. Um, I've spent about the last 35 years in the healthcare industry. Um, but I'm really happy to say I'm a professional network marketer now. business, how did you keep your circumstances from becoming an excuse? Um, I got into this business in October of 2011, and I have been chasing network marketing my entire life, looking for my purpose, and I knew it would be through this industry because it's about people. And I may not have a lot of business skills, but I've got a big heart. And a week after I got in, my husband was laid off, and he was getting severance. And I also brought in a great friend of mine, Corinne, very quickly. And those two circumstances became an excuse for me to not push myself personally. My husband getting severance became an excuse that it was okay if I didn't move fast because we were still okay. My friend coming in and moving quickly was like my blanket. I used helping her as an excuse to not further pursue other distributors and make me push my skills and myself. And then suddenly my husband found a job in Idaho and we had to move. And everything changed. I was a stay-at-home mom. I was going to a place where I knew no one. I was out of my comfort zone. And I had a choice to make. Was I going to sit and make excuses and use all of those circumstances or was I gonna move forward? And you guys, if you don't know what you want from this, you're going to convince yourself you don't need it. And you were all here yesterday. We all know we need this, and people out in this world need this. So I decided that there were not going to be excuses. They were going to drive me to do whatever it took. And I found one other distributor locally. We linked arms. We put ourselves on Big Blue Calendar every single week. And there were a lot of meetings where no one showed up. But we kept going. I got out, I made cold calls, I walked into places, and I kept working the list I had in other places. And thank God that I moved to Idaho because that's where life starts outside that comfort zone and that's what happened for me. That's why I'm here today. So as we were walking out, the ladies decided we're gonna come out shortest to tallest. I don't know if you noticed that, that was planned. And Marilyn said, oh no, I'm in the middle, and I was the middle child. <laughs> and we brought back horrible memories, not just sure. So, as you mentioned, you've worked full-time in radiology, mammograph, mammograph, <laughs> learning and pushing it. Breast imaging. There we go, breast imaging. <laughs> Tough job. Well, May 1st, you 
finally made the decision to walk away from that full time job. What made you do that to go full time with Isaac? Well, it was a very lot of soul searching, but for me, um, I to be honest, and I'll probably tell you this later, I wasn't very comfortable with the network marketing thing. And but I had read a book that um, Vanessa Marquez. Shout out to her. She had recommended to our team to read the book, um, The One Thing. And in that book, it opens with a scene from the movie City, City Slickers. If you've watched that movie back in the 90s, I believe, or the late 80s. And it's about these guys that go out um, on a cab drive, and they're kind of in their 40s and 50s, or in a midlife crisis. They're trying to find the secret to life. And they go out into this ranch on this cattle drive with this old guy, um, Jack Palance was playing the guy of Curly, and he takes the guys on this cattle drive and, and he says, um, do you want to know the secret of life? And Billy Crystal was playing the, uh, Mitch, and he said, no, what is it? And he said, it's that one thing. When you figure it out, the rest doesn't mean blank. And when I read that, a couple of years ago, my husband was able to quit, or sell his full-time plumbing business and, and pursue his passion as a, as a farming and ranching full-time. And he loved what he does. And he will never retire from that because that's who he is. And um, seeing him being at peace with his passion for what he does, and I wasn't feeling that at my job. You know, for 20 years, I've done the same thing. I was the mammography coordinator at QC and all the responsibility. And, you know, it gets, it gets old doing mammograms all the time. And um, even though I'm very passionate about it because my mom and my grandma and my aunts and I've got a family affected with breast cancer, so it's still a passion of mine and I still work part-time just a few days a month doing that. But it's very important to me, but I wasn't getting the fulfillment. I could see he was at peace. He was pursuing his passion. And I didn't feel that anymore with my job. And so after some soul searching, I decided that I needed to just make that bold decision. And Maria Williams came up to our, our market in Sioux Falls and she did a meeting for us. And she had asked us to just step out in faith and and follow our dreams and follow our, our heart. And at that point, I just thought, you know, Lord, if this is, this is for me, I, I think I can have the faith to do it. And so it took a lot of courage, but I'm so happy I did. And this is the first event I've attended in four years. I didn't have to ask my boss for time off. So hi, when I heard you were from the Philippines, I got so excited because now you have to practice my Tagalog with, with Kai. So Kai Paul, uh, coming out of poverty, you went and you're achieving financial success. You know, it's remarkable. But why not remarketing? Okay. Um, as the youngest of the four siblings, living in poverty was really tough. At the age of 25, I already took the huge responsibility of taking care of my parents, two grandparents, mother's side, and at the age of 33, I became a single mom just after being married for three years, but I was blessed with a wonderful son, his name is Nico, and boy, he became my inspiration and he helped me to get out of poverty in the family. And so, I then achieved my own level of success, owning and operating my own telecommunications company, and that gave me true financial freedom. However, in the year 2003, I remarried to my wonderful husband, Greg. And that's when I sold my company and decided to migrate to the US with my son. I didn't work for five years, but the company's proceeds got depleted. So I then decided to get back to work and I became one of the top banker in the entire Austin district at Wells Fargo Bank just within 18 months. But guess what? I'm not happy being an employee again. So um, one day, um, a good friend of mine who cares enough to share this incredible information 
Although I saw something that I've never seen before because I've never done network marketing in my life. But it was so unique and powerful, I would not allow to just pass this opportunity. So what I did is I invested part time and uh, because I can't just quit my job. But after 11 months, my goodness, I was close to matching what I was making with my full-time job. So that's when I decided to fire my boss and quit my job forever. And, and now I'm making three times as much as I'm making with my full-time job. So I just really discover how to create that freedom. And that's one good reason. But this next reason is more powerful. It was in November 2014. I just arrived from Austin. I'm from the Philippines, um, having my business trip there, only to find out that my beloved husband, Greg, was diagnosed with a grade three brain tumor. <laughs> it was funny. And um, immediately, I thought, am I going to lose him? Because the fact, you guys, there's not a lot of people survive brain cancer. But he underwent this major surgery and he also brightly completed his grueling chemo and radiation every day from January to February. And this unique opportunity, you guys, was able to allow me to drop everything that I was doing with life advantage. Five months until March of 2015, November to March. And I was thinking, like, if I was from Wells Fargo, I would not only lose my job, but I would not get paid every single month, right? So this incredible opportunity, the gift of life advantage, was able to allow me and Greg to be able to focus on our emotional stress and forget about the financial worries. Because... Money can't buy help, but surely money was able to allow us to pay our medical bills in cash. And today, by the mercy of our Lord, my grant is cancer free. A brilliant cardiologist by the name of Dr. Mark Gordon st stopped by my, my office and invited me to a life advantage meeting. At the time, I was the head dietitian at the, at the cardiovascular hospital where he was working. And when I started that nutrition program back in 2000 and 2001, I really got deeply involved in the scientific research on cardiovascular nutrition, and I found out that my research, because I'm, I'm kind of a science geek, and we have a bunch of those in this room, I know that. Um, and I found out that heart disease really starts with this concept of oxidative stress. And because of that, I brought in a, a, a new dietary and eating plan at my hospital called the Mediterranean Diet, or the Prairie Mediterranean. I kind of repackaged it for the Midwest so that those farmers would eat it. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I was, I was really a trendsetter in my profession in that arena, and that was with all the, the, the science that I, you know, read all those years. You know, I, I, I knew that when I saw this, and I saw, wow, this is a huge trend in nutrition, and I'm one of the only people that knows about this. And so um, I just wanted, I signed up that very day. I wanted to get the word out. But there was another reason why I joined Life Vantage. And that is my husband of 32 years, Wayne Shear, passed away in 2009 from stage four brain cancer, and I did not know this about your story. Um, this, and so this, her story, I, 
is, is really emotionally touching and she's describing what she was going through with her husband. I went through that from 2008 to 2009. And, you know, it was, it was really challenging because, you know, my husband was an extremely healthy man. He had impeccable health habits. You know, he didn't abuse his body in any way. He, he would eat those greens that he just hated, you know, but, you know, he knew that they were good for him. And I would cook up all these foods for him and he was just, you know, took a handful of supplements every day. But in spite of all of his health habits and everything he did, you know, to protect himself, he still, at the age of 67, diagnosed with brain cancer, passed away in 14 months. And when I saw that, because I, I went and searched for every kind of nutrition concept, therapy, anything out there that could help my husband, I couldn't find it. There was nothing. And nothing that I could do. Here I am, a professional nutritionist, and I've been telling people all these years what they can do to prevent chronic disease and cancer and heart disease, and I couldn't help my husband. And so I knew at that point in time, we need these more, more powerful tools in nutrition tool chest. So I got, I, I, I saw this, I knew that I didn't get the word out. And when I saw this, I realized that I could have a bigger impact by being in this business and getting people to understand about, this, about the breakthrough. So it was really on the science piece, really, that captivated me. But really, it was when I came to an event like this in two, July, four years ago, that I really got into my family. It was the culture and the people here that really, really got me really going with my family. And now I have to say that I am proud to be a professional network marketer. So Marsha, you've been in the healthcare industry for many years. Was it a problem for you to consider a alternative to Western to the Western medicine model? Really, not at all. Um, I have been a registered nurse and done hospital administration and run a level one trauma center. And I know we have probably the best healthcare in the world available in this country, but we don't know it all. And I was brought this opportunity by a physician friend that I had worked with off and on for 25 years. I actually thought he was crazy. I mean, I couldn't imagine what he was doing. I was so irritated, I wouldn't even look at the video for seven months. It's true. But you know what, he did everything right. He didn't push me, he just kept following up. And he'd say, have you had a chance to look at that video yet? And eventually I looked at it, seven months, and said, oh my gosh, if this is even one tenth of what it looks like, it's huge. Because we don't have anything like this. We don't have anything that does what these products do. And I didn't even know NRF2 at that point. I just knew that this was, this was a big deal, this was a breakthrough. So I started doing the investigation myself um, on the science side. Never looked at the business because I didn't like network marketing. I'm from Michigan. Who lives in Michigan? Amway. <laughs> the granddaddy of network marketing. And I had been approached so many times and I didn't think anybody ever made me money so I just didn't. And I kind of bad mouthed it too so. To to think about doing network marketing was really meaning I was going to have to eat a lot of crow. <laughs> but let me tell you, crow tastes really good. <laughs> so Kai, in Elite Pro 7, you're up here in the women's panel. What's the significance of being up here with the Elite panelists? Well, I know for one thing that there are a lot of elite women out there who deserve to be here more than I do. So I'm completely honored and humbled that I'm here and to represent you as well. Uh, there's a lot of significance, Geraldo, and to name a few, this is my incredible time and opportunity to represent my team out there. And, uh, 
to empower them to believe that they too can be here if they wish to. And this is the ability for me to be given a chance to empower and reach not only to women but also men for that matter. It's huge. And this is a big opportunity for me to remind each and every one of you that we are here but shepherds. We are just responding to the difficulties of a present life. We are actually here to be able to reach out to those whole, all who are wounded. And who are they? Look around you guys. They're much closer than you think. These are the people that struggles to find quality time. These are the people that suffers with their illnesses and sickness. These are the people that are financially anxious and depressed because they can't find employment. So in other words, it's all of us. All of us are wounded. So we need to be all shepherd to care about all the people that are going to come into our lives. So, do we dare to say no to this call? Do we even ask ourselves and wonder, what can I do? I have more than enough problems to deal with. No. If we ever think this way, all we need to do is ask God to have faith in Him. As you know, Ezekiel was crazy. Isaiah preached naked. John the Baptist ate bugs. The Samaritan women got divorced, remarried, got divorced, remarried, got divorced, remarried. And Lazarus was dead. Now what are your excuses? <laughs> and finally, this is not just about being here, achieving elite run. Because, you see, no matter how we achieve in life, no, none of us here can boast of our achievement compared to God's standard. We are here called to be servant leader. And let me leave you with this quote. Our life is a gift from God. What we become is our gift back to Him. Thank you. Marcia, often it's said that everything we have done in our life has been preparing us for where we are today. How do you, in your years in healthcare, feel that that prepared you for life ending? Well, it prepared me to know a lot of things that I didn't want to begin with, but I'm glad that you mentioned something about servant leadership because I think that um, may be one of the most important things that I did learn and be able to experience. Um, I was lucky, fortunate enough, whatever, uh, to become the lead nurse in a hospital. And when I was struggling trying to figure out what to do with the supervisors, because they, some of them were really unhappy. They didn't like what they did. And they'd been there a long time. And my father had a book fall off the shelf and hit him in the foot was in Florida and it was about servant leadership and management and he shipped me the book and I read it quickly and then I bought a copy for every single one of the nurses that were going to be in supervisory management positions and then I called them all together and I fired them <laughs> I fired all of them and I said and you can all reapply right now <laughs> But you need to tell me why you want to do this. Why do you want to be in the position that you're applying for? 
And it, amazingly, there were several women in the room that stood up and cheered and came over and hugged me and said, oh my gosh, thank you, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and I, you know, I was kind of surprised, but those were the ones that I knew were unhappy. And so we then used that book kind of as our management tool and it was important for them to understand that to be in that position meant that they were responsible to make sure that everybody else could do their job, that they had what they needed to be successful doing their job. So that meant if an IV bag went on the floor in the ER when you're having a code, you don't pick up the phone and call housekeeping, you go get the mop and you clean it up and you do whatever it's necessary to help those people that you're responsible for be able to do what they need to do. All right, Marilyn, what would you say is the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome in life hack? I think it would have to be fear because as most of you that know me, um, I was the girl in the back row of my very first event in San Antonio in 2011 that was thinking, God, I hope this thing works, but please don't you ever put me up on that stage. <laughs> well, I guess we can be thankful for unanswered prayers because what happens was, is that through the process of attending these events and this business grows you in ways you cannot imagine, and so you're witnessing a miracle today that I'm up here doing this because I could have promised you I would have never been able to do this before. But it's, it's that antidote to fear is faith. And our faith in ourselves, our faith in our heart, in, in our faith of what we believe, right? And that equips you for, for not being afraid to stand up here to share because we know it's not about us, it's about you. We wouldn't be up here without all of you. And it's my my sponsor and my, you know, Sharon Morty that brought me to this business and my team and my wonderful upline. You know, you all know who you are. You all played an important role in helping me overcome that fear because I was the one that didn't want to get on the plane and fly without my husband. I was the one that was waiting until I was about a pro four before I did an entire meeting up in front of people by myself. I mean, I'm ashamed to say that, but I was, I wanted to be in the background. I did not want to be in the front because fear was holding me back because I knew with leadership comes great responsibility. And part of me just didn't want to be responsible or didn't want to, you know, make a mistake or didn't want to lead somebody wrong. And I had never done this before. And so, to me, it was huge to overcome that fear, but I'm so glad I did. And I think of the, the dragonfly, you know, when we maybe see ourselves as a water bug and we're content in the mud and we're content where we're at, and then those, those brave bugs that go on the lily pad and all of a sudden they fly away because they sprout their wings and they grow, and that's all of you, you know. You that have just joined, this is your first event. You know, maybe you're feeling like that water bug. You're feeling a little scared, but when you develop those skills that this business provides and gives you those tools to, to grow yourself and your belief and your faith in the company and the faith in, in yourself and the faith in our products that we can help so many people overcome their fear. And it's about sharing and, and growing this, this business with, with the world. So thank you so much. All right, Joanne, tell us, how's your, how has life energy impacted your personal and financial freedom? Well, I, when I joined Life and Teach back in January of 2011, it, it really was a very, very low point in my life. You know, my husband had, been, had passed away, just like I said, about a year before. And, you know, the reality of moving forward without him just kind of started to set in. You know, all my dreams, hopes, and plans for the future were all tied up with my husband. We had these great plans. We, were, we had bought a retirement home in Montana in the Helena Valley. We were going to live winters in Arizona. We were going to 
buy an RV and travel the world. And so we had all these great plans on what we were going to do for in, in retirement. Um, and, and so when he died, it just, it really rocked my world. And I was really in this kind of dark place and I was depressed. And I remember it was the first Sunday in January and I was in church. And of course our pastor was talking about how God has a plan, a hope, and a future for us. And I was thinking, well, well, well I don't know. What is that plan, God? What is it for me? What do you have for me? I don't know what it is. And this still small voice spoke to me, and I knew it was God. And he said, Joanne, the best season of your life is yet to come. <laughs> it was that very that was Sunday, that next Saturday. Dr. Mark Gordon invited me to a Life Image meeting. So that was an answer to my prayers. This business was an answer to my prayers. And while I got in initially, I saw the, the I saw that Pertana was going to change the life of people because I knew the science was awesome. I knew it could help a lot of people on um, the nutrition side of this. But you know, I needed an extra $2,000 a month for retirement. I was short in my retirement account. That was the other reality. I was facing a financial reality of not having enough money to ever retire. Uh, and I was looking at maybe working until my 70s. I mean, that's not a very hopeful future. And so I didn't really get engaged in the business side until I pretended one of these lead academies, like I said. And what I did was when I saw the company, the corporate people, the, the leadership of our distributor team, I'm like, all those people are working for me. What am I doing sitting and not getting out there and building this business? I, so I, I, I got back to Sioux Falls and I went to work and I tried, I learned to be, I had to learn to be a professional in this business. I had to go to school, I had to be a student. And 20 months later, I walked out of my windowless office and into a newfound freedom with my vantage. Now, I remarried to a wonderful man, Jim Parkin. Thank you, honey, I love you. You're my business partner. I just so appreciate you and what you do for me. You know, but I'm gonna close with this one thought. You know, I, I heard, I heard uh, Donald Trump uh, you know, say something on CNN and he said, the American dream is dead. And of course, he's going to bring it back, right? Well, <laughs> okay, uh, if you were in this room, you know what I'd say to Donald Trump? I'd say, you're dead wrong. The American dream is not dead. It's right here. Hi, Tanya. You've done seven other now remarkable companies. What made you choose Life Vantage to be your home? So we were all here yesterday, right? Amazing day. So this question now, it's just a stupid question. Really. <laughs> so, I chose it. I mean, Manage. I I walked through my life with a quiet desperation. My first exposure to network marketing, the attraction I had was the people. The people that made it and were changing lives and they walked with this graceful posture. That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be that person. But when people have dreams and hopes and desires for their lives, they don't always share those with those around them because they don't have the association that will fill them and build them up and tell them, yes, you can do that. And it wasn't until Life Vantage and Michelle bringing this into my life, love you, um, that I was finally taught what to look for. The company, the products, the trends, the system, the compensation, the timing. Hello? Like, I was never taught that before. And it's not always easy. But that quiet desperation and when you're vulnerable and you choose to share your heart's desires, you have an arena full of people that are going to listen. 
They want to know what you want, and they're going to help you do whatever it takes to get there. You got to let your guard down, you guys. You got to share with people what you want, and you got to know what you want because this is your opportunity. The grass is not greener outside of Life Vantage, okay? It's not. Linda Satterfield said yesterday, don't quit before the miracle happens. So you got to ask yourself, what's your miracle? What do you want to happen in your life that you've desired and dreamed for? What does that feel like? Feel that and don't quit. Don't quit because then you're quitting on yourself and you're quitting on all those people in this world that are yearning to hear your story and know that there's someone else like they're going through the same thing. And you have the chance to change their life. It starts with you. So make it happen. All right, everyone, it's that time for the panel where the time clock is starting to come closer to zero, right? So what we're gonna do in less than a minute, I know we have a lot of new people that are here for the very first time, they're just getting started, but as well to everyone who's been here for, for a while, in one minute or less, what advice would you give the people out here in the audience who are maybe not sure that they can do what you've done? Show up. Show up at the meetings, show up at the trainings, show up at global convention. You better show up, because if you don't show up, you're not going to gain what you need to wear that suit of armor, to be fearless, and go do this business. So show up. No excuses. Okay, I would say find your passion. Uh, what happens sometimes as we go through life and we have jobs that sometimes suck the life out of us, we squash that passion, we suppress it, and after a while you can't even find it. You don't even remember what it was. Find that passion again, because that's what gives you life. But then be sure that you follow up, follow up, follow up. If that physician had not followed up with me those seven months, I wouldn't be here. Just because nobody responds right away, things are going on. So follow up, that's really, really important. And um, the last one I would say is don't assume. Don't assume that you know what they want, what they need, what they're capable of doing. Don't bring somebody in thinking, oh, this is my, this is my ticket to row five or row seven or wherever, because you can't know that. Don't assume, just share it with everybody that comes across your path and ask God every day to put those people in your path. I would have to say, early on, like I said, network marketing was new to me, so go to YouTube and watch Jim Rohn, The Magic Part-Time. Because back in 2012, I had been in the business about a year, and I was working full-time at my job, but as Jim Rohn says, you're working full-time at your job and part-time on your fortune. So remember that, that wages or profits are better than wages. And when I realized in 2012 that the big hospital system that I worked for gave everybody across the board a 2% pay decrease, everyone went backward in my department. But in those two years, my income doubled because of Life Vantage, because I was working part-time, or full-time at my job, and part-time on my fortune. And so I want you to remember that, that there's power in network marketing. Also. Watch that video, The Connector, on YouTube as well. That made me understand that are you a connector? The economy has changed. We don't stay at our jobs for 40 years anymore and wait for our retirement. It's not our fault that the economy has changed. We're looking for connectors and people that can connect in the new economy, they will be the ones that are rewarded. So that's my two tips of advice. For all those people who are doing this part-time or full-time, it doesn't matter. You've got to be all in 100%. You've got to have that passion and desire to do this so that you can persevere. And I'd like to let everybody know that it's not just about us, it's also about our team who made the sacrifices to be here. That makes a difference. They are here to be able to spend their last paycheck to be able to come to the events. They are the ones 
who sacrifices their time with their children, missing their school award ceremonies and all that. So we've got to be here for them. We cannot quit on them. And I'll leave you with this thought. Life Vantage, remember this, Life Vantage is all about changing tomorrow together. Again, Life Vantage is all about changing tomorrow together. Uh, my tip would be that uh, we talk about so much about how the business is mindset. And the mind, mindset that I think of is I think of the mindset of an entrepreneur. What does an entrepreneur do? An entrepreneur takes personal responsibility for their business because they know if it's going to be, it's up to me. Now when I joined Life Vantage, I didn't have, um, we, we were brand new, Dr. Mark and I were in the community in Life Vantage. We, we really didn't know really what, exactly what we were doing. And I didn't have really a, a, you know, a lot of upline to do home meetings for me. So what I had to do, I had to do my own home meetings. I had to carry Dickie CD and I memorized it practically and I wrote the script out and I stood up in front of the room and I gave my own presentation for my own for my first home meeting. So, like they say, and I learned this business, the people who make the money are at the front of the room. So that's what I did. So go home, take that personal responsibility, hook onto your upline and find somebody that you can just learn and be the, uh, that can be that mentor to you and help you to grow because we have a, the most awesome, wonderful opportunity and just go do it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, ladies, I know you probably know this, but there's about over 5,000 people right here in front of us. And I promise you that you guys have touched all of these 5,000 people, right? Please help me, standing ovation for our women's panel.